We back. The like button, people. Subscribe. Let's start this thing out with smoke. No episode. Well, yeah, I guess it'll be an episode. You know, it's Super Bowl, Super Bowl, this Sun. Well, last Sunday. Yeah. Well, yesterday. What the hell am I talking about? Day Monday. I'm sorry. Sniffing huh. napalm. With your girlfriend. How about that? She a drug at. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, Super Bowl yesterday. Did y'all have a good time? You have barbecue or whatnot? All right. We're going to get on. Just want to know. Let me know in the comment section. But uh, in that Super Bowl, there's a lot of celebrities, except for the president, normally. Well, what did Obama have won them Super Bowl for? Well, that don't matter. That ain't the point. But the point is, during the national anthem, you, did you see, did everybody see that Jay-Z and Beyonce was sitting down? Okay, I think we passed kneeling. Yeah, I thought we were past kneeling, though. Did not think about that. Yeah, 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 I thought we was past kneeling. Yeah, they were sitting on out, sitting there having a jolly old good old time, smiling up and stuff. Yeah. They supposed to been standing with their hand across the heart, singing along. We, we know Beyonce got the pipes. Yeah. She could have went out there and sung it, but, you know, we get it. They gave it to Demi Lovato, but that ain't the point. Yeah, well, that's why when I saw it, I was like, yeah, look, I thought, I thought we was past kneeling, bro. And mm-hmm. it just looked like a display, like 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 a, like it was performative. Like okay, you know, black people gonna be watching, so we gotta do this stance, even though we at the NFL. And then even before that, I had seen a thing where he was like, "Yo, me and Cap are cool and stuff like that." And I'm like, "Dude, we on the same path." And I was like, "Got different tactics." Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, um. Because some of the other stuff I was hearing it. No, Cap still mad about that. So I could be wrong. No, Cap. Um, you gonna get a kick out of this? Um, he subtweeting again. Yeah, but Brent Grimes, old lady, Miko, she know. tweeted out the same thing that I just said. I thought we were past kneeling, right? She tweeted it out with photo with Jay Z yeah. kneeling. And Cap liked it, the photo, and he put it up. Like, yeah, I thought we wore too. Yeah. And they were like, what's up? What, 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 what? I don't know. And that my thing, I'm like, wait a minute, y'all. And, and you should have known. Now I say I talk about celebrities and stuff. I'm like, how stupid are you? Nope. <laughs> because there's certain stuff that you, know, like you say, it could have been staged. Did you watch the, um, I didn't watch it. The super, the half hell time. no, I ain't gonna, no, let, let me, man, I can't me. tell you the last time, because I haven't, I have never watched the Super Bowl halftime show, even when they had I, Prince I, up there. 07, 07, you know I had to watch 07. Because of Prince? Prince was on. I, now, I, I, and I, I didn't I watch, watch that, I don't really not know how good it was, because they showed a replay of it on Saturday, and I was like, I should have watched that, but yeah. I never watched a halftime show, I don't care who it I, is. I don't, I don't normally watch it neither, but... I'm going to bring up two things about this um, halftime show. One, the Super Bowl was in Florida, okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you had so many artists. Rick Ross. Um, Pitbull. Florida. All of the New York, I mean, Miami well, people. Yeah. None of them got to perform. That's for one thing. What Pitbull Two. do? Who? Pitbull. No, he wasn't. I can't believe but that. But I want to say something else, too. Now, on this show, I'm going to keep it 100. On this channel. Yeah. I'm going to keep it 100 that. again. On this show, I tell about in the 1980s how when black people start trying to organize um, for better wages. And healthcare and stuff like that With the jobs back in the 80s They did the Hispanic Project Where they went and got all these immigrants And they came to America And undermined black success And black struggle Now With Gabriel Union Gabriel Union not too long ago Was fired Because she was on there fighting for Asians and stuff with her hair then the girl, what her name is, Vigara? Sophia? Sophia. 
She comes in and says, I'll take the job. Black people protesting the NFL, saying they weren't going to perform at the NFL. That's one of the reasons why they brought Jay-Z in. Look at Shakira, Demi Lovato, and J-Lo. J-Lo. All Latino women come right in to do what? Perform. Yeah. And I understand that it, it, because it was in Miami, but like you said, there's a bunch of big other no, big time artists yeah. that's in but Miami. Another thing, another thing too. Where were the Afro Latinas singers? See, it was a display. Like when I talk about like Telemundo, well, I don't know too many of them. So you might have to tell, call out some <laughs> Telemundo and shows like that. You never see the black. Well, yeah. Latinos like and the reason why I bring this up is because about two, three weeks ago, Mexico just now acknowledging their black Mexican population. Two, three weeks ago. They wouldn't even acknowledge that Mexico had black Mexicans. I did not know that. Yeah, this is what I be telling you about Canelo Everett. That's a white Irish boy. Mm. White as snow. But he Mexican, and I also always say Mexican is not a race, just like Canadian is not a race, American is not a race. But these folks be saying we Mexican. Mexican is not a race. But they hid the black population. Nationality. Yeah. They hid the black population down there, and they just now acknowledging it. And that's why when you see all the Telemundo shows and Latino shows, you always see the goddamn lighter skin, white. Latinos. Well, yeah, yeah, like ain't gonna lie. I always said those light Latinos are not women in a way, not my favorite. I like mine with a little color to them. Yeah, but see, <laughs> this is the thing where um I was watching uh it was this dude, it was an interview on World Star. I think World his name Star? was Russ or something like that. I think I know you talking about. And he was on there talking about how he thought Post Malone or whatever um, was mooching off of black people culture, but then now he like a rock star wearing cowboy boots and all this shit. And he was like, and he was like, see, I'm white. And they were like, what, you white? He was like, yeah, maybe white. And once called, he was like, no, dude, you, you got some black in you. Yeah, you can look in and tell that you got some black in him. And he was got some black in him because black people was over there, the Moors, was having sex with, <laughs> with the women where he come from. And so back then, the people from where he from, they had blonde hair and blue eyes. But then the black dudes and you sleep with the women over there, and now he got, like, black hair and eyes. Mm-hmm. So this is the same thing you see in Mexico, right? And places like Cuba, when you watch Cuba, they just, the, when they would show you Cubans, they had like lighter skinned Cubans like Dan Lebertard. But the majority of the people in Cuba look like goddamn the baseball player. That, Every baseball player, they be honest. There's a lot of them. Yeah, from but Cuba. You, I was thinking of what you call it though, from the Dodgers. Queeb. 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 He, he yeah. He's on the Dodgers no more, but I See, know. It, most of the people there look like Queeb. But when you think Cuban, they show you. A lighter, fast Yeah, skin, people like Dan Lebertard. More Levitard accepting. And Person. Yeah, and it's, it's the same thing with those shows like Telemundo. But hardly ever do you see the darker skin um, Latinos be represented. And that's why I always think to myself, these folks who be trying to um, ignore their blackness, Afro-Latinos and all of them, it's like, it ain't like those white Latinos accept y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't. All race of people have some type of inviting. And this is the same thing with that movie Crazy Rich Asian when they had it. It was like, yeah, Crazy Rich Asian. I'm like, where are the Filipinos? Where are the dark-skinned Asians? The tan Asians? How come they never get any play? Only the white ones. And it's the same thing mm-hmm. with the Latinos, too. But I said every single time, though, with these folks... With black people, you see them undermining black people. Like, we can rise up off of black oppression. And that's what was amazing by 
watching that Super Bowl performance. Like, and then West Coast, she had that twelve million dollars. That's why she had to get out there. Shakira, she had to get that twelve point five million up because she old back taxes. Pay your damn taxes. Everybody yeah. pay your. Everybody <laughs> gotta pay taxes. What well, you think you ain't gotta pay your yeah. taxes? I was like, yeah, that's you know you had there. the money. Yeah, but it was you know crazy. Her husband like a celebrity too. The CJ. Jay Z the mock there, and it's like, okay, you set down in the national anthem. Like I said, Jay the mock that trying to play both sides of this aisle, man. Yeah, they've been doing that. Mm hmm. Been doing it. Well, all right, people, hit that like button, subscribe. Next topic. I was uh, re- reframing to talk about this anymore. Like it's certain topics I like. I can't get tired of talking about every now and then. It's, I'm I'm different from everybody. Else. Everybody will keep throwing the same stuff out there. But uh, R. Kelly, again, you know, one of his, one of his eight girl, he ain't got never one girlfriend now, and, and that's true about to fall too. But I guess at that point, one of what a good name is. I think uh, Azrael, Clara, whatever it is, say she's working with the feds now. So I guess I got to put in the wild words of a white girl, blonde haired white girl. This is the final scroll that broke this camel sack. You, you said it wrong again. It's the final scroll that scroked the camel <laughs> sack, man. Scroke broke. You, you, you broke man. In his case, again, man, you joy bushing it. In, in his you case, it broke. You fooled me once. Same on you. <laughs> if you fool me again. Well, you'll never fool me again. You fucking don't like George Bush, man. Oh, Woody. From Toy Story. He got a friend in Michelle Obama. Yeah. Man, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm. That man, wait when I do my Obama years thing coming up, man. I got a lot of that stuff in there. You got a friend. But anyway, back to Art Kelly. She's supposed to be working with the feds. And. Like, it's kind of funny because, like, what, a year ago when this whole Surviving R. Kelly thing, her and the girl Jocelyn was up there lying through their teeth. And then he go to jail. And, and it, I don't yeah, know. Money, though. But no, that was the thing, though, because when that other girl Jocelyn had post came out there and they threw, like, the little fake thing, she was like, no, my money good. I saved my money. I saved my money. And then it was like, okay. I guess, so I don't know because I remember like you didn't. I didn't because like I said I, I didn't want not want to mention anything about it because I was done with it. Did I didn't want to come back? Mm-hmm. Uh, not meant to cut you off, but have you seen this Harvey Weinstein stuff that coming out, man? I've been hearing this stuff, well, but I ain't been paying Shawty attention. Who said he raped her? She said she thought that he was an intersect, right? She said because. He didn't have no testicles. She said she Whoa. thought he had. A, it looked like he had a vagina. I said, "Ugh." <laughs> I ain't hit a. I heard one thing when they were like I was somebody. Like, oh. Somebody had supposed to rape him. I mean, he supposed to rape some woman, and then she came back for more or something like that. And then they were like, "Yeah," but I said, that's a lot of stories, though. That's a lot yeah, of stories like that. Like he ain't had no balls. Couldn't just be him because he was fat. <laughs> Hell no! He still had some damn balls. That nigga had some type of surgery. Something done. I mean, he got no sack. Yeah, none. She, he had none. I was like, dang. I see. I was saying it because I he was up with it, Harvey thing a little bit. I see it every now and then, but you know, like it don't. Like I go on TMZ and they had like other like stuff from other websites, but I don't click on. It. I don't click on it when it's on TMZ. So, uh, but. Now you got me thinking. Got it was a perfect attendance pencil. <laughs> Shut up, fool. Shut up. That's fool. what it was. No, it won. Perfect but, attendance pencil, man. I'm still thinking. Like, that's why I said it because he was fat. Because he might have had a tusk nah. tucked into his legs. And then when he looked up the, <laughs> you know, the penile, it was like, pow. It was like a baby vagina. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> um... Yeah, and I remember before, like, it was a couple of weeks ago, I think, well, maybe it was in last year, in the last year, where she supposed to got the fighting with the other girl, Jocelyn, and then we're talking about how she was going to tell on her because 
space because they, I guess she was underage and the girl Jocelyn was older than her and they pulled had a threesome or something and then they got to fighting and it was like, huh? Hot mess? Huh? Hot mess. Man. And then it was like, yo, I'm not, I'm protecting myself. I'm protecting myself and I'm like, R. Kelly in jail. So what are you saying? Did the police roll up on you one day and say you don't file a turnover? Or somebody come to you and say, yo, you know you could be a sexual to a crime and she like, I'll tell. Cause that's the only time you say I'm protecting myself because R. Kelly is in jail and it ain't looking like he getting out no time soon. So you basically protected. Like, what do you mean you protecting yourself? Like, I don't know. And then when you had the chance to come out and rat the dude out, you sat up there and told a lie. No, oh, she was hoping that he'd get out. That but was... no, by that time, he, they, he was still out. Remember, because R. Kelly had his interview with Gail, and then it was like they was in another room, and they had an interview with Gail. They were like, y'all could have just... Now, of course, we see that the girl, Jocelyn, she's sticking to her story. But all the girls were like, yo, you could have pulled Gail to the side and be like, yeah, in my true story and stuff like that, but she didn't. No, because they were still hoping, getting, getting that bag. <laughs> She was just trying to collect yeah, another check. Yeah, that bag. Yeah, 2020 up. calm. I'm dipping out. Yeah, that bag. They're looking at that's that Aaron Hernandez. Remember Aaron Hernandez, old lady, she was riding with him that whole time. You so wrong to bring up the dead. I'm just saying. She and was. how the wife then now slept with his with, best friend. Yeah, now she just had a baby by one of their best friends. Yeah, she was holding on as long as that bag was going to be there. They had a friend in him. Yeah. So that's what the thing is with this R. Kelly situation. And now I was like, yo, like. And now I said, I was like, yo, you would thought after that girl, like, mm. And because I know a lot of people, they was saying they thought it was a ploy. And after that whole, what was it? Patreon thing. I can understand you thinking that's a ploy. But. Them getting the fight, like I didn't, I, I did watch it a little bit. It didn't look like they were going in. I, I ain't gonna lie, they were going in. It, it, it should have been a candidate on World Star Fight Camp, but it would. But it was just weird. And I'm like, huh? All right, I guess R. Kelly. Well, you already in jail, R. Kelly. You ain't, you ain't gonna get no better. I mean, but I think he went to jail for child support, right? This time. Unpaid child support. It went because he had got out of he had got out. Of course, he got off the first time with those women. Getting off was he? Was he aroused? <laughs> Stop it, man! But yeah, he got off the first time, and then the little thing I think last year or the year before, but with the little hotel, his little studio, he didn't really go to jail for that long. And then this time, I think I think it is a child support. He must be in there for child support, but I'm guessing they're just going to start attacking on stuff now. We got you for child support, robbery, the theft. The situation. Yeah, that too. They're just yeah. going to start attacking on stuff now. And I'm like, yeah, I'll kill you. And I finally got you. Mm-hmm. The same thing I told that dumb boy, OJ, I'm going to tell you. When you know you ain't committed a crime and you ain't got away, you need to sit your Dumb ass down somewhere. <laughs> Not in this case. That nigga deserves to go to jail. Damn that nigga. No, yeah, true. He does. I'm not saying he don't, but I'm saying, like, like I said, if you commit the first crime, you don't go out here wilding out still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he'll seal your nutters. No, nah, that's... Seal your can't be stopped unless they get clipped. Yeah. They ain't gonna get stopped then, man. They seal your nutters. Yeah, he finna get clipped all right when he in prison. And them niggas gonna tell him a new one. Nah. Uh, I heard he got that body odor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they said R. Kelly got a natural <laughs> body odor. The niggas ain't messing with that nigga. Hell no. You what know they I'm also thinking, said dude. it about Megan the Stallion. That's no another story. Yeah. They, they, they were like her old boyfriend said that, and another girl said that about her. I was like, they're two people. Oh, you know what Megan that means? The stallion. You know what that means. There's some good truth to that. But that's just, that's just, just adding it in there because you brought up the right kind of thing. Hey, nice right, people. It didn't mean nothing about it. Hit that like button, subscribe. Next topic, man. I'm going to talk about Michael Eric Dyson, bro. Um, 
M E D. Michael Mitch. A. Dyson was on um Bill Maher's show this past Friday. And he started to talk about they were asking about black people. And he was saying how black people Obama policies didn't help black people very much. So a lot of black people were kind of disappointed in Let me get he started caping. No, yeah, I mean, let me finish. Put on then, Superman but suit. He was talking and he, he was speaking truth to power. Wait, who wait, let me get it correct. I could be wrong. I always get him confused. Michael Eric Dyson is the big dude, light skinned dude with yeah, the be on first. He yeah, be like yeah. rapping while talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then who the other dude with the gray hair? That Cornell West. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Got right. Just so he was on there and he was telling the truth about you know, Barack Obama, and then he started talking about some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in my Ob- in my Ob- um, Obama year series that I'm going to do. He started talking about how Obama would talk down to black people, but then when he would go talk to white people, he would always make it, it was somebody else's fault. But for black people, it was always their fault. Call and he talked thugs. about the same thing. Yeah. Uh, when he gave the speech at Howard, he was telling them not to make excuses and everything. And these guys, he and Mike every day said, Obama, the only person that was there who didn't earn their college degree were you. <laughs> yeah, all them guys had, had earned their college degree. And I'd be like, yeah. But then something happened. And this is the stuff that I'm talking about. He he go he ripple off all of these things of why it is that black people are disappointed in Barack Obama. And then Bill Maher said, Oh, can I just like Obama? Can I like Obama? And then you see the crowd cheers. But I said, you see where white people think that they're supposed to be able to tell black people who we have to like. See, it's mm-hmm. here go. They want to listen. Yeah, here like go our. Do. Here go the black person that we find acceptable black people. So you must like this dude because we like it. Right? They're trying to tell black people who they can like. We just supposed to like Obama because. He black, even though Obama kept the system of white supremacy rolling intact. I'm surprised that my girl does one of the cases. Now, the other dude, he's a little piece of shit. He's the uh, mayor of um, shit town. New Orleans. Um, I did not mean that, New Orleans. I forgot his name. But I mean, he was on that. He was like, well, you know, Obama still got a good approval rating amongst Democratic voters. And I'll take him over. And Michael Eric Dyson, yeah, I'll take him over Trump. Man, I'll still take him. I'll take him. It was like, no, bro. No. How you just going to sit here and eliminate all the bad things? Stuff? Yeah. And, and then come, come right, right back, back and, like, back yeah, and say, I'll take him. But see, this is the thing that Malcolm Malcolm X taught us about these clowns. When he, back in the day, he would talk about Goldwater and LBJ. He said, everybody want to tell me that LBJ, it better then Goldwater. He said, hell yeah, when you stack him next to Goldwater. But he said, if you put LBJ over here to himself, then he ain't shit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. See, this is this whole lesser evil nonsense. And like I said, man, HIV better than AIDS. Manslaughter better than murder. But tell that to the people who dying, bro. Don't hit me with this nonsense. And this is the problem that you see from the people who are supposed to be represent representing black people in the media you can't say all this stuff about obama and then say yeah i I take him over trump no that's not the point you wouldn't take a woman and tell her look here ma'am you gotta choose between this here rapist and this abuser and tell her she gotta choose one Cause she'd be a damn fool if she told them one up. They tell no, well, you know, he ain't worse than the other guy, you know. But this is the stuff, and I said with Michael Eric Dyson, he do this stuff, man, all the time. And it's like he was out there, and I said, with you know, with us as black folk, we voting on compromising anyway with these folk. But I said they pick the most centrist compromise. Ever black people do, mm-hmm. and I said that's the problem, bro. Like, 
They you be can, compromising for all the people. Like you can, yeah, you can compromise, but man, make sure you what get make some you money. go with centrist politics? Yeah, that's my problem. Like Obama do was trash on so many issues, but they want black people to be happy about the symbolism of Obama. And yeah, then, he was a black dude nah, in sim- No, nah, symbolism don't pay no bills, bro. Yeah. Don't pay no bills. And that's what was amazing to me. Like, listen to Mike and Eric Dyson switch up on this. Real quick. Like, yeah, and the white people told him, no, oh, we like Obama. He's like, yeah, I like him too. <laughs> it's a good job they fell Yeah, I like him too. The white people told him to like him. He's like, yeah, I like him too. Even though I just said that he did yeah. and talked down to us like we was mm. nothing, but, but yeah, what, I love what, him what Obama did is the Clinton doctrine, right? Sacrifice your own for political gain. This is when Bill Clinton was out there trashing Sister Soldier, taking her words out of contact. This was Bill Clinton when he went down there to the white supremacy, uh, white supremacy site to announce that he was going to. Do the 1994 drug bill, or when he shot a shit on Jesse Jackson that time. What is that about Jesse? This is, huh? What he was trying about? to let. It's signaling, right? Who? Signaling. What you do is you signal to white people, specifically white people in the Midwest, that you ain't gonna do shit for black folk, right? Like Jesse Jackson. I know you see me around him, but this black man ain't going to be telling me anything to help the black community. So this is what he was doing to Jesse. And Obama was doing the same thing. When every time he gave uh, speeches at um, the NAACP or Al Sharpton National Action Network, anytime he talked to black people, he talked down to them. When he gave the speech at Selma, it was the same thing. And I said, Obama was using this as a way not to do anything for black people. I ain't the president of black America. I'm the president of all America. But he was sitting up there talking about gay issues coming out for gay marriage. He was out there amping up transgenders. He was out there talking about equal pay for equal work. And then did the Little Let Better Act for women. But when it comes to black, People specifically, no, I can't just talk to black people issues. I'm not the president of black people. And we keep letting them get away with this foolishness black people do. Mm-hmm. Like like right now, that's that's what Joe Biden is doing. Will not say anything whatsoever about Pacific policy towards African American community, but continue to get African American vote. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely said it. it, it, it some point black people in America are gonna have to be like yo we know you not the president of black people you probably be the president of all people and we hearing a lot of stuff coming out from whoever the president candidates are and it going to all the other people but it seems to skip over us when it get to the B in the alphabet y'all skip over cause y'all don't wanna deal with us yeah and see Another thing that he was saying, he was talking about, he was telling them why Cory Booker and Kamala Harris didn't do well in the election. He was like, yo, a lot of black people, they're like, we didn't done that Obama type. We don't want that no more. Yeah, but they mm-hmm. still, but I don't think that's what black people are doing. Because they, I said, it ain't that they didn't want to vote for Kamala Harris and vote for uh, Cory Booker. They were falling for the other shit black people dumbasses fall for. Hey, look. They white man know a black person. He cool. Or oh, the many you're telling you the only Joe Biden is the only one who who's can beat electable. Trump. And the dude that ran for office two times and got less than one percent of the vote. Or the same this is the same argument that they had what four years ago with Hillary Clinton and lost. Yeah. Crazy, bro. Alright, people. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Next topic. Man, we're gonna talk about what happened this weekend? What hell? Rashida Tlaib. Now, I've heard this person before. Yeah, she's a uh, congresswoman from uh, the D up there in Michigan. Now, the thing is, I I like about Rashida Tlaib is that 
Rashida Tlaib knows that the people who put her in office is black folk. She knows it. So you'll see her turn up. I don't know somebody do. Yeah, you will see Rashida Tlaib say stuff that you won't see any other the other politicians say. I remember watching Not her. Not the turning up part, just that she knows that black people put her in yeah, office. Yeah, she, oh. she knows it. Like, she was on the, uh, on, in the Congress one day, and there was a white dude, and he had set that black woman up next to him like a prop. And Rashida Lee Sleep just said, Sir, I ain't going to lie to you. What, where I come from, people see, see what you just did. We call that racist, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that we call that racist. Right? So this weekend, though, um, she was at a rally. I think it was in Iowa because Cardinal West, Nina Turner, all of them was there turned up. You know, Cardinal was dancing and every goddamn thing. But the it was dead. her, Iman Omar, and it's another young lady. Uh, she a progressive. She be going up too. And so the moderator had begun to ask her, uh, we're finna get ready to ask her about Hillary Clinton and her comments of, couple of weeks ago about nobody liking Bernie Sanders and nobody want to work with him and stuff like that. So when she, when she brought it up, uh, the crowd started booing, right? And so the moderator was like, nah, we ain't going to boo. We ain't going to boo. And she was like, she was like, nah, we boo. We going to boo, Hillary. Boo, boo, right? So as soon as I see this, I know it's what's going to happen, right? And I keep saying over and over again for the progressives out there. Progressives, you're never going to have a progressive party until y'all deal with y'all white womanhood problem that the Democratic Party has. Not white women, white womanhood. And what I mean by that is this. I just been saying what the hell are you talking about? Hillary, Hillary Clinton comes out, she trashes Bernie Sanders, right? Mm-hmm. She trashed the Bernie Sanders supporters, called them Bernie Bros. But you don't supposed to be able to say nothing in return against Hillary Clinton. Because if you do, you get attacked. So I knew, watch all of these white women who constantly be out here talking about listening to black women. It's always listening to black women until a black woman is on the left of them. See... When Rashida Tlaib, uh, Iman Omar, Alexander Cortez endorsed Bernie Sanders, these white women were talking about, what happened to supporting women? No. Vaginas and, 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 and skin don't tell you nothing, but we're talking about ideology here, what you believe in. And you can still support women, but they, that means you also... Hold them to a standard. If somebody saying something wrong, you let them know about it. I, I, it don't mean, yeah, yeah I'm just going to ride with them just because. Yeah, but see. Even though they said something wrong, I'm still going to ride yeah, with them. Yeah, but see, though. this is the thing with this white womanhood thing that we got. It's like the white womanhood shit is like, you know, you know bros over hoes type thing that white women got. Where if you say something about Hillary Clinton, all of them going to pile on you. And so you had this other white woman named Soledad O'Brien. That's so wrong. <laughs> this other white woman named Soledad. This white woman, she comes out talking about, hey, she got a little call you guys her. might want to remember that you might need these uh, people who you, Hillary Clinton voters and stuff that you're talking down to. Never, first of all, they never t- she never talked down to Hillary Clinton uh, voters. She talked down to Hillary Clinton. And first, secondly, when y'all the one who were bashing Bernie Bros in 2016 saying how y'all didn't need them? Now you are here trying to tell somebody else about how they supposed to go about uh, not criticizing somebody because they need their vote? Y'all was doing this thing in 2016. Now let's be honest. They, 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 them them hit the Clinton voters didn't help her win. Yeah, and also, like I said, in 20... Well, in well, 2008... Well, well, people who didn't help us win. In 2008 with Barack Obama, it was like... 25 to 30 percent of Hillary Clinton voters went over and voted for John McCain. They even had a little group called Puma Party Unity, my ass. But somehow these people forget all of this. Yeah, I ain't know nothing about that Puma. Yeah, they had it. I like had it. the Puma thing. 
So, but you see, the Democratic Party has a white womanhood problem. And I think people think that conservative white women is the worst white women that America has to offer. Nah, it happened to be liberal white women. Those are the worst ones. Because listen to black women, listen to black women. Until it's Nina Turner. Shut up, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> until it's Nina Turner. They were racist as hell against Nina Turner. Nobody brought that up. Solar Dad O'Brien, none of those black folks in the media brought it up how racist they was toward Nina. But the Democratic Party has a white woman problem, bro. And I knew as soon as I seen this, I was like, watch this. They going to attack uh, Rashida Tlaib like it's no tomorrow, bro. And that's exactly what they did. And that's why with these folks, I'm like, yo, man. A lot of these people believe that Bernie Sanders can win the nom- win the nomination. I don't think if he somehow wins the nomination, he ain't gonna win the general election, bro. And the reason why is because old white women gonna stop him. You Remind see, me again, general election is what? Twenty twenty when he run against Trump. Really? Well, I mean, I said them white women gonna stop him. They tried to stop Obama, and see the problem is. The reason why they couldn't stop Obama is because Obama had black people and Latino. The problem is Bernie weak with black people, weak with Latino. So he ain't going to be able to make that up when them white women turn coat on his head. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said that's the thing they're going to stop him from winning in the general. But I said the problem is they got with Joe Biden is black people are going to stop Joe Biden from winning in the general. Blacks and young Latinos. And young blacks. Most of the young blacks. I don't know about the old blacks. No, the old blacks, you know, they always cooning. But <laughs> <laughs> they they oh, most definitely go vote for Joe Biden. But the younger ones going to stop them. Just like they stopped Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. And so when I look at this thing, it's like, yo, Trump going to take this thing again, man. Watch this. And right now, it's re- looking at some polls, right? And they was talking about South Carolina. And it was like 27. Joe Biden with 27. Uh, Bernie with 24. And then Steyer. Steyer was 17. I said, boy, he been out and you know, buying black people vote. Because I know he was out there talking about reparations and everything. Running ads in South Carolina talking about reparations. I was like, he down there buying these votes, and he didn't brought Joe Biden numbers down. And I said, and then that in the poll that I saw, they didn't even have Michael Bloomberg up there. Didn't even have him up there. So it was like, man, they taking away from Joe Biden. And I said, the momentum after tonight, because I think after tonight, uh, Bernie probably going to take tonight. It probably be like a little debate thing. No, Iowa. I know, that's what I'm saying, nigga. It no, it, it's the voting. They voting today. Oh, uh, see, I don't, you know, I don't know <clears throat> too much about politics. Yeah, they voting today. So, he probably going to take Iowa, and if he get more minimum out of this. Oh, minimum. It's going to be serious. I can't wait till tomorrow morning if Bernie Sanders wins this thing tonight because the media going to go absolutely bonkers. They was already going crazy. Yeah, the day yeah, before. Yeah. A couple days before. Of course, but they going to go absolutely bonkers. And I said, these folks getting ready. Mark my words, people. Mark my words. What a grand salt. They are about to destroy the Democratic Party. Watch this. Because I said, you know what? With Bloomberg, Steyer, Bernie, uh, Lizzie, they are all about to split this thing. And we're going to go to a broker convention. Wait and see. And that's when, but Bernie going to have the most delicate, but he ain't going to have enough delicate to put him over the top. And they going to swoop in and they going to steal it from him. Wait and see. It all hell going to break loose like 1980. What happened in 1980? With, uh. For me and other people who don't It was know. 1980, 1970, 1980. A broker convention due to Teddy Kennedy and I Jimmy Carter. I thought you were making it up. No. Broker convention, I yeah, you yeah. Broker convention. <laughs> you know, you ever heard of old Dan Rather? Yeah. Dan Rather got his ass whooped on the convention floor. Somebody punched him in his stomach, 
It went down there. <laughs> no, somebody whooped off in Dan Rather ass, bro. Dan Rather. Unless you intend to arrest me, don't t don't push me, please. Sir, I'm doing I know you will, but don't push me. Take your hands off of me unless you plan to arrest me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, Walters, you can see. I don't know what's going on, but this these are security people apparently around Dan. And obviously getting roughed up. We tried to talk to the man, and we got uh, bodily pushed out of the way. This is the kind of thing that's been going on outside the hall. This is the first time we've had it happen inside the hall. We, uh, I'm sorry to be out of breath, but somebody belted me in his stomach doing that. What happened? And I said, that's what we finna head. We finna head. We headed toward this place again. And see, this is what led to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan damn near won, I think, were 49 states out of 50. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He he can he, he was like, nah, I want a unanimous, yeah. almost unanimous yeah, America. Yeah, he won 49 out of 50 states because all the voters was pissed because they person that didn't win and all the folk were mad. So they said the Kennedy people had stayed home and shit. And um, Jimmy Carter got eight against Ronald Reagan in 1980. I ain't hurt nobody. Yeah, but that shit finna happen again. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a broken convention bro all hell gonna break loose and i'm over here like tio give me my goddamn popcorn i'm about to enjoy this because what i want to see happen anyway is that party be destroyed and rebuild it from scratch because it needs to be you rebuilt from like scratch. chaos and it, but no it, it, chaos finna ensue it finna ensue are they finna go crazy if bernie win this day and night all right people hit that like button subscribe Next topic, what you got, baby? Well, if you've been keeping up, we haven't really been keeping up. We've been low key on that thing, but we're gonna get into it right now. I'm gonna try not to tell a joke, but it's gonna, it probably gonna come out. The coronavirus, man. Well, first off, I want to ask the question out there in the comment section. Y'all scared? I know the ones over there in California in the West Coast. That's why I seen that. It, it, it been hitting that. It been hitting over there. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a dirty nigga, what I'm finna say. But what? I'm enjoying the coronavirus. What? Because the Asians are getting payback. Karma. When the Ebola broke, they were kicking black people out of their countries and everything. Oh, now the white know. people are being racist toward they goddamn <laughs> masses. And uh, they like, yeah, oh my God, you right. guys are being racist. Nah, karma, man. Karma. This is how y'all were treating black folk. No, I'm worse. Covering your faces and everything. But no, that's the thing. Like I, like, I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard from somebody who was in China or Japan once, like I think last year and whatnot, and they were like, yo, because I always wondered about that. Yeah, but. I always wondered about that from um, Asian people, like why they always wear their masks and stuff, but they were like, no, they said they were, like, I don't know who they like I said, this is what somebody else said. They, a tiny, tiny person told them that they wear their man not because they think somebody else is sick, but it be, it be because they be sick. So I don't really know. I know that they said that wearing their masks don't help for with their coronavirus, so <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one. But yeah, I was worse. Because when I first heard of it, I was like, what? It's in China? And this is when they very started. It was like, it's in China? I told her, I was like, hey, Trump, get on the phone. Close the borders to China and tell all the planes that are coming to America, tell them to stay their asses over there. And I mean American people as well. American people, but he didn't listen. So, the next couple of days, you saw seeing what people in California pop up with it. And they were like, see, I told you, should have closed them borders. Yeah, but, you know, them. What? you know, for me, it was like, just crazy listening to all these white folk, Asian people talking about how these white folk being racist towards them. I said, everybody out there getting their wake up call. Yeah, everybody. Like in the 1960s, black people weren't telling y'all this, but y'all telling us, "Shut up, niggas." Mm -hmm. He believed the white man. Yep. And now we've seen you savages. Like I saw one where they was on the plane, a little Asian girl was on the phone, and then they she was on the phone sitting down, and then they kind of rude off to the white people, and the white people were sitting over there with their shirt over their faces, like they mm -hmm. might got that on top of. <laughs> not knowing, not she knowing that, top over yeah, here. not knowing that it was, it, it, like, and that's my thing, like, I can tell how stupid people are, because like I said, I said close the borders and plane because I know it's American people 
who travel to China for business and stuff. White Americans, Black Americans, yeah, Mexican. I'm saying you keep all of them over there until they say, yeah, everything is cute. But they just gonna look at Asian people and say, no, it's just y'all fault. Mm -hmm. now, now I will admit. I think I, I, don't, I don't know how much of this stuff is true because I really haven't been paying attention too much to the coronavirus thing. But I know some people have been being like, yo, it come from, was it, flying mammals or something like that. And then because, you know, it was a video of an Asian chick eating a bat. And I'm like, man, if so, then Asian people would have died a long time ago because they always eat some type of foreign or crazy thing. They made a whole TV show about it called Andrew Zimmerman. Weird world, bizarre foods. Yeah, but I don't know where it came from, man. But um, hope they get that shit contained. And yeah, cause get people quarantined because that shit looked like the first uh stages of a Resident Evil video game. Mhm. Mm and I'm like, wait, hold on now. Yeah. This is how the apocalypse starts. That sounds like the like down here in Georgia, we got them zombie animals now. You seen that shit? I think I seen yeah. some of that. We got that shit in Georgia now. Like, I'm glad I live in the city. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it got to be somewhere yeah. where the woods at. Yeah, like, hey, we, we ain't we ain't nowhere near nature. Nature yeah. had to come find us. But people out there get better, especially if black people. Y'all catching it? Hit that like button, people. Subscribe. Next topic. We talk about Johnny Depp. Justice for Johnny. Justice for Johnny. <laughs> See, man, if y'all don't know, this girl Amber Heard, she had came out and said that Johnny was abusive to her. You still saw her and everything, right? And people have pretty much, you know, we in this cancer culture world now, so people like we canceled um, Johnny Depp. I still watch Pirates so, of the Caribbean. Come out recently. The videotapes come out with her admitting to her being the one who was doing the abusing and assaulting him verbally, verbally and physically. So now everybody is out here want to holler justice for Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Some people were like, there's some of the people that I seen. They were like, they had already, and yeah, they they, they always were kind of on Johnny's side. Yeah, but they said she shit in that man bed. See, I ain't know that. See, yeah. I, I had stopped paying attention. Like, I had stopped paying attention after a while. Stinking brutal ass boy. Because I think it was twinning for like two days. Yeah. It was, I think it started like Saturday, early Saturday. And then it trickled off into Sunday. And I'm like, man. See, I, cause I, ain't, like, I knew about some of the stuff. I didn't know she was supposed to cut off his finger. I didn't know she was supposed to do pots and pans in his head. Yeah. Burnt his finger. I mean, burnt him with a cigarette. Poo pooed in his bed. That uh, that's just disgusting. I'm talking like, about it was chocolate for uh. Shut up. <laughs> for you even get that joke out. <laughs> for somebody, you even get that joke somebody, out. It was somebody with Easter Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, somebody with chocolate for Easter Sunday. Nasty nah, little half. But the thing was well, for me though is like because the other thing like I didn't think about it the year that they were kind of. Messing up Johnny Depp because I, like, other than the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, like I haven't seen him in too much. Now, I know he's supposed to be doing like a little rock thing, so uh, the rock and rock band. So I didn't know, but yeah, I was like, I was agreeing with them people that I had seen on Twitter, which I'm I, I was shocked that I was on, but I ain't seen no other media outlet talk about it. I was like, what yeah. all this media out stuff because, at? Because, because, because they're, when, not, they're not going to talk about it. Because when, 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 the the when they first came out, everybody was out here yeah. slamming Johnny Depp. Slamming so now, hell out of it's like two websites with this thing. Same like, same way with Chris Brown. Remember where rape allegations had came out against Chris Brown last mm -hmm. year? And then when it came out that it was fake, everybody was silent. Didn't say nothing. And the thing is, that what you people to ease. Some of these people who be getting riled up, that's what you need to be paying attention to because in both of those cases, actually three, I think, because I think Nelly did the same thing. When a person, woman come in here and say that, uh, that some a man did something to her and that man come back and sues that woman for lying on them, it, mm -hmm. it letting you know it ain't what you think. Yeah, but they just dropped, the, like Nelly, with Nelly case, the girl dropped it because she said she didn't, Feel like the prosecutors paying enough attention to the to the case, but what I want to talk about 
pertaining to this Johnny Depp situation is this. Man, we have a, a lot of women in this country. And their problem that they have is that they only see men as predators and other victims, man. Yeah, I see some men on Twitter. Uh... So, the reason why, when you see, like, Ray Rice situation, everybody was going in on Ray Rice, not me. Why? Because she abused him first, bro. She was the aggressor. Spinning she was the aggressor the night in there. Starting shit with other people and Ray Rice were trying to get her up out of there because she was causing the scene and then she started beating on him. So then he hit her back. But you see, they'll wipe away that she was the aggressor. They'll practice eraser because they see men as predators, bro, and never victims. They see men as humans and don't see themselves as humans. See, they see men as humans because men are... People are flawed. Humans are flawed. But they don't see themselves as human. And when you don't see yourself as human, that means you can't accept any accountability or responsibility for your actions. So she comes out and she make these comments and everybody just say, hey, it's real. They did the same thing they was doing with the uh, Me Too movement and doing with the Kavanaugh hearings too. It was like, bleed the women, bleed the survivors. I'm like, man, listen here, man. I've been on this planet long enough to know that men rape women and women lie about being raped. That's why we have a courtroom for, man. We got to take it to court and find out what is true and what is not true. But these the folks, you hear these women, tell me, I tend to believe the women. Then how come the men can't believe the men? Mm -hmm. Right? They, they, it, the stuff that they say, it don't even make sense, bro. Cause, yeah, cause it was funny because it was somebody that had said that about this Johnny Depp thing, and I was like, "Really?" Cause like I said, like it was a picture of him with the uh, burnt marks on his face, his finger getting cut off, and I'm like, "I didn't notice until that day." And they were like, "Yo, the evidence had been out there for the longest time, but yeah. we just ignored it because she said that she was abused. We just ignored that yeah. he had all the injuries, and." It was a video of a woman. I guess she supposed to be like their neighbor or something. And she was like, the day that she filmed herself, filmed them, like him throwing stuff and stuff. Like, that was the day that he supposed to win. Something happened that day. And she was like, yo, that day, we didn't see no bruises on Emma Heard. We didn't see no bruises on her or nothing. Mm -hmm. But Johnny Depp, yeah, it pisses him walking around damn finger off and stuff bruises all over him but now think about the what's called the situation by the way um Khalees Khalees talking about Nas I don't know if y'all can't see this when she said she tired of protecting black men she ain't taking protecting black men I said these women and they hurt feelings boy and they refuse to heal is amazing to me and I was like boo you know what you know I live in Georgia, right? I live in Georgia. You and uh, old Nas live down here in Atlanta, boo. Then no uh, Yes. And you think we didn't hear about all them stories about you abusing Nas? Oh, yeah, I did remember that. Now you were spending all this money? We were like, um, we live in GA. Khalees, we, uh, we heard the stories, baby. And now here in Georgia, stuff get around. People talk. It ain't yeah, just the but, women. Huh? <laughs> I was telling a joke. I said, it ain't just the women. Yeah, it ain't just the women <laughs> who like to gossip. <laughs> but, no, we heard all of these stories about you abusing Nas. And now she's out here talking about... For real? Um, not riding with black men and all of this stuff. I said, man, it's funny. How one, two black men can do something, we all get blamed for the shit. Yeah. We all get blamed for it. Yeah, yeah that, that shit starts in middle school. You know, and I seen some <laughs> sisters, there was some sisters on the internet, on Twitter, talking about, talking about this thing. And they were like, I wonder how a woman can say something like this and then raise little boys. I said, no, that's why these little boys come out as messed up as they are. Cause they hear their mom. Yeah, they, how they shit. hear their mom ragging on their fathers and 
Stuff like that, bro. Mm-hmm. Then they sit here, and that's my thing. I have always said that because I like I ain't seen some stuff about it. Like I'm thinking, I think they they do like a little program or something. Cause I seen it on World so one time where there's a couple of case, or maybe there was like some special thing where a dude who probably didn't have a father in his life. And then he heard about a bunch of things, bad things, and then he had his own thoughts about his father. Then when he finally met his father and stuff and spent time with him, he realized that, no, it, it ain't what I thought. Like, what I when thought. When I was just a little baby boy, my mama used to tell me these crazy mm-hmm. things. She was telling me my daddy was an evil man. <laughs> she would say he hated me. Stop it for me. That's what it is. Yeah, and it was like, yeah. And that was how I always started saying it, you know. So many people, like, who, like, said they hate their father, they father one in their life. Like, yo, I ain't saying you got to like him. Meet him one time. Maybe, maybe it ain't what it seemed. Now, some fathers, it are. It's that fucking horrible day. Yeah, so yeah. you finally meet him and he well, lets you know how tough no, he is. this is what you got to do. Then you right, move no, on. No, this is what you got to do right him smoke. Let me tell you when you know the problem. You can easily see it. If you come from a single parent household and you when you was a little bitty baby, you were two, three years old, and now you 21, 22 years old or in your mid-20s or whatever, and your mama's still single, your mama was the common denominator in every relationship that she was being in. It tell you that your daddy didn't abandon you. He abandoned her goddamn ass. Yeah, and it just happened that you were stuck there in the process. Yeah. yeah. And I said, that's what you have to think. And like I said, there's a difference between a single mom and a single parent, bruh. A single mom, she go on and find her another man and get married. And that's when you see people say, yo, but I got a stepdaddy. That's my stepdaddy. That's my but real single daddy. parents, they don't. Single parents have a kid at 17, 18, 19 years old and be 35 and be still single. They asked the common denominator in they, all those relationships, bro. That's how you can tell. But see, some people don't want to admit. They don't want to admit when they moms mm. are thoughts, bro. Uh. <laughs> they don't. It's hard to admit. Because uh, yeah. you know us, how, how black dudes are. We can have the worst mamas ever and then go right to the NFL and buy a mama house. We only want to admit that. Why are you talking about Eli Alpha mama like that? <laughs> I ain't talking about Eli Alpha. You brought that dude up. I'm talking about in general. No, that's when not We do stuff like that, like man. Like you were talking about that dude. Okay, we, I think we did a story on that. But it sounded like you were trying to bring up old stuff. Let that man go. No, I'm just saying this This is the type of stuff that happens. Well, people can't admit that when they have a bad parent. But they'll yeah, admit, people can't admit when they got bad kids. They'll admit when they got a bad dad, though. Yeah. See, women can get credit for being present. That's what happens. They get credit for being present. No, I haven't been told you that. Because... And this is, this is the same thing that I talked about in politics. Again, when we were talking about Hillary Clinton. I was seeing people saying, yo, man, Hillary Clinton is a feminist icon. What has Hillary Clinton done for women? Besides get y'all to support her because she's a woman. Hell. That's it. She ain't done nothing for no damn women. She ain't done no with feminist this, icon. But this, women can get credit for being present. What did them her thing? They were like, yo, she was the face of the Me Too movement and some other stuff. And I was like, what? Yeah. Crazy. How did that happen? Crazy stuff, bro. Huh? Crazy. Oh, and But I said, what it boils down to, to see men as predators, bro, and see women as victims in every scenario. That's what they see. That's why R. Kelly is bad for sleeping with little children, school teachers. We ain't going to say nothing about that. Because most of the ones I have seen recently or have been women. Yeah, most They've of been them some are, dudes, are, are, are women. I've been seeing more women than them. But, yeah. But, you know, when, you know, when we were talking about the, the the difference between single mothers and stuff, I had been like, when said this, that, like, we see the brawn, we see the brawn, and people say, "Oh, she's just a great mother for raising up a kid like that." Because LeBron went on and done some done some good things. But let it be a little Johnny, not Johnny. Got to think of a black name. Let it love be little Trayvon, not Trayvon. Trayvon, Trayvon died. Let's think of another name. Tra- Tyrone. Dave, 
Yeah, Tyrone go out there and be a be a goddamn criminal or something. And they say, oh, he did it because he didn't have his father in his life. And they were like, wait a minute. We're not going to say anything about the mother. When the mother was there and it was a bronze, yeah. you praised him. Yeah, <laughs> when but, mother, yeah. that's you, what I'm you, saying. You blame the father. Like, yeah, come on because now. Because they get credit for being present. That's why I say these women be out talking about these men abusing them. I'm like, dude. The mother, the women raised them. Mm-hmm. The women raise them. When you teach your children, you abuse your children, you teach your children how they problem with violence. Ain't no problem that they coming up being little terminators, beating on folk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had that pimp C. Came in there and started beating me on my body. <laughs> <laughs> pimp C. Pimp C said. Pimp, pimp, pimp C said that Master P came in the hotel room and started beating him on his body. And P came in there and started beating that man while he was asleep, man. That dirty, bro. Was, and had four dudes holding him down. I was it thinking. was like, um... It was like Eddie Murphy and Charlie Murphy. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Rick James <laughs> <laughs> on that couch, man. <laughs> Should have never gave you niggas money. What about my legs, nigga? <laughs> what about my legs? But yeah, though, with the thing, though, with Johnny Depp, man, it's crazy. And that's why I'm always waiting for all the evidence to come out. Because... I seen people, people out there start petitioning trying to get her off that Aquaman move out there. People Dang. in the mainstream media, whatever, man. That's how they see men, bro. They see men as predators, dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, predators every single time. And that's why I was talking about this thing with this. The girl was talking about, hey, about black men dating white women. She was like, we be looking out for black men because white women uh, accuses um, black men of rape. And I was like, yeah, and y'all happen to believe them every time that they do. Accused black men of rape. You believe the shit about Nate Parker? You believe the shit about um, what just happened recently? Russell Simmons? Mm mm. It was another one that just happened recently. I forget it. Black dude accused of raping white women? Mm hmm. I don't know, man. You got me. Man, I forgot what it was. But I was like, but they believe. No, Kobe Bryant. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. They believe it about Kobe Bryant as well. So I said, you believe him? When they do say the shit. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. Though. And then we just didn't got into this, um, these gender wars, man. And it bros over hoes and chicks over dicks. That's what we doing out here, bro. I'm more about waiting to the actual factual. Logic. All right, people, hit that like button, subscribe. Next topic. We got the old money team back in the news again, and we ain't talking about Javante. Did you see that Gucci suit that Floyd had on last night? It was mm. a Gucci bag. He was he he was in his bag. It was a Gucci bag. <laughs> I said, Floyd Mayweather got all that goddamn money. Something is still a terrible dresser, man. I think that was 50 Cent said about him. But, no, um, I did not see that. But we are talking about Floyd Mayweather. He being accused of assault again, and this time it's not a woman. If it was a woman, you probably yeah, had a good yeah. chance of no, being I, true. I know he didn't do this, then. It was a dude. Yeah. Nah, I, he, he, like, he only fight men in ring. He fight women outside. <laughs> so, what do you got, like seven, seven cases of domestic violence, Floyd? Something like that. But, uh, yeah, it, it, and it was crazy. It's a video. I'm going to put post it up, put it in here. Probably not going to have any audio. No. When I put this up, single video, it'll have audio. But, um. It yes, it's yes. What the fuck? I know you are. All right, cool. All right, cool. I'm a free man. All right, cool. You're not touch me, though, fam. Don't touch me. I'm a free man, Floyd. No, come on, chill. I get my ass whipped and I get all your money too. How about come on, that? Come on, chill out, bro. Where you going with that? Where are you going? With a group? Bro, chill out, man. Turn this shit off, bro. Hold on. Bro. Bro. Yo, bro. Relax, man. I'm a grown man, Floyd. All I ask is for respect. Okay, you ain't let your ego get in the way, though. It is ego. I just told you to respect him, man. But I'm just walking, bro. He's still talking. Come on, I'm man. walking this way. He's well, still looking at me. His attention is on me, though. Obviously. Come on, man. Just leave it alone, man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like my, it, yeah. Of course, he was. I think it was a fan, and fan was just trying to get an autograph or whatnot. 
I think it was an autograph and flow up like, dang, dude, I can't even get a good morning. You just gonna come right out here and at me for an autograph and some other stuff. And then the dude start popping off at him and then flow up like, dude, I'll whoop your ass. And then he was like, yeah, if you do, I bet you I get all your money. And it was like, you touch me and I'll suit. Yeah. Touch me and I'll suit. It is just like that. And now I had to think about it. Yeah, if I ever had a lot of money and somebody hit me with that, I probably would be stooping up and swing on them. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you got enough money, yeah, yeah you'll swing on them. Right? You got that, that's when you got that FU money. <laughs> you got that FU money, you can swing on anybody at that point. And then they were like, in the video, because it, it's a video, and now I'm like, dude, how do you accuse somebody of assaulting you while you recording yourself? And the dude never walks towards you. He just stays back. The people who touched you were the security guard. That's their job to push mm, you back. Crazy. Now, now what are you doing, dude? You just in, and not incriminate. Now I don't know if you can get go to jail for falsely suing somebody. Mm. I ain't never heard of that. But it was like, dude, that's that thing they be talking about about people self snitching. <laughs> mm, didn't know they had it on camera. Yeah, and they were like, yo, you know you can't put that out and then come back and say, yeah, I'm suing Floyd. He assaulted me. When? He never even got close to you, dude. And you know we weren't going to believe it like my brother said. It wasn't a woman. Yeah. <laughs> we know his history. Yeah, we know his history. If it had been a woman, we'd been like, yeah. yeah Floyd probably did that. Yeah, he probably did that. But if it was a dude, it like, uh-uh. And then another thing, talking about Floyd and boxing and stuff. I didn't know that you had to register that your hands as a weapon. Yeah. Did not know that. I yeah. found that out by watching Clarissa Shield interview, and I'm like, really? Yeah, old old dude, old white dude. A couple few years back, um, he was I like, got fat and bloated, and became a uh, bouncer. He ended up beating a dude with half his age and half his size, and had punched the head into the ground. Um, and they gave him like 15 years because the judge had told him, you know, your hands are uh, considered lethal weapons and you chose to use your art on someone outside of the boxing ring and sentenced him to a long time in jail. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, but what about all these people who be training for karate and stuff and be out here beating up folks? Do they get it? Well, I guess. Yeah, I don't know about that. I guess they regular people so they don't get the, ain't nobody in. Is it now? All the, I ain't gonna say it is. It is a problem from dudes out here who've been training in karate and mixed martial arts who just go outside looking for somebody to fight, just looking for somebody to say something smart so they can get into a fight. So I'm guessing that with that idea, like, yo, that other person was aggressor. I finished it with my karate, but yeah, though, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this. I am. Let's talk about this Javante Davis story real quick. The video came out uh, Javante Davis Snatching up his baby mama He said he didn't get physical But you snatched up didn't Yeah but he snatched up And The thing That I want to talk about is I seen some women Talking about this story And they was like How come none of those men helped This a good girl We're trying to help He no, was no, trying to pull them away No but she talking about other people First of all That man is a boxer <laughs> Right <Yeah. laughs> First of all That man is a boxer man Man, get paid to hurt people, man. That's for one. And two, I hear women talk about this stuff, man, and I want to talk about because I remember one time. I knew that would come, so it was going to happen, too. When I was like 16, 17 years old, right? One of my partners, I come up on the set, on the, up the street, and he had took out a, he had a lighter fluid. Bottle of lighter fluid and had pulled ga- uh, lighter fluid on a belt and lit it on fire and he was beating this chick with it. It was his baby mama. Now, I grab him, throw him into a car, start swinging on him. Know what happened? Next thing I know, I get hit in the back of the head. Who hit me? Her. She yeah. hit me in the back of the head. That's the reason why I, I don't break up fights. I turned I'm looking at her like, the hell you doing hit me for, man? I ain't seen a, co- a, a couple of these type things where that happened before, and that's why yeah. I don't break up fights. Like, and you I, try to and be a good Samaritan, that? 
Yeah. And they end up and turning like, on you. This chick ain't finna put nothing on my commissary. She ain't finna attend my funeral. Or none of that. While I'm dead or in jail, she gonna be out there with that dude. Roll up with him. Yeah. And I said, these chicks be sitting out here talking about why men don't be stepping in and helping them. Because y'all don't do nothing but go and be with the same sorry nigga that you were with from the beginning with. You was in a relationship with that abusive nigga. Mm-hmm. Right before it, a man tried to tell a chick not to date this type of dude or that type of dude, is we trying to tell them to do what to do with their bodies, and then soon when they get swung on by the dude, we supposed to intervene. Hell, Don't want to listen to us when we telling them that the dude that they mess with ain't shit. All right, I got a man. But then... When they get swung on, why y'all didn't help? Man, you ain't putting nothing on my commissary. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why. When I go to prison or you <laughs> end up striking beef out here with some dude because of this chick, hey, now you got to worry about his homeboys and everybody trying to get at you. Mm-hmm. But I never forget, like, that shit happened to me like three or four times, bro, in my team. Where you step in and try to help a chick, and now she go back with the same dude. See, that never happened to me, because I always had the policy of sitting back and watching. <laughs> you dirty nigga, man. No, yeah, but, but see, this, this not, is, not with this is not with a woman. Yeah. Like, I don't think I ever... Let me tell you. Have I ever had that happen to me? And let me tell you, like, uh-huh, with, it's with it. Far. And I kept doing it, right? Anytime, especially if it's a sister. I would intervene. And the reason why, because I remember I had... A conversation with my pops about it. And I was telling him about how I wasn't going to step in no more for these girls because they kept going back with the same dude. And my dad told me, like, yo, you got to keep doing it because it just might be one day. It's a girl who really going to leave. Him. And you, so you got to keep doing it for that reason. But, man, these chicks out here make it hard for dudes to step in when they keep going back with the dudes who abuse them, bro. I'm mm. beating on you when you trying to help them. Now, and I, cause I, like I said, I knew that was going to happen. And I'm watching, like, and I was like, yo, this security guard, one of the security, like, he was on one, I think it was a security guard. It was on one brother, and I seen him trying to pull the front tape back. But by that point, after he snatched up, he was like, nah, it's just trying to get y'all, both of y'all out of here. But, and- yeah, everybody else was sitting there just being quiet. But I was like, yeah, like, you know, like, man, I, I don't know. But, when, when- I do get that. Like, no, I said, like, I do have that same thought. So every time, like, when there's two men fighting, yeah, I'm definitely just going to sit there and let that ride. I'm not jumping in there. But if it's a man punching yeah, a woman, yeah, you try to yeah I'm, I'm, like, I'm stepping in. I'm, I'm saying something. Like, but, Especially if it's something random. Yeah. And it, like, yo, know, like, because it's it, it just weird. And so, not not weird, but it's it just dumb to just sit. Because I have seen that on a bunch of videos, and I'm like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, but I'm just saying. sitting there with laughing and stuff. But, but I was like, they experiences, instant, though, bro. But they, I, they, they, he can't be having these experiences where these women be talking shit to him, mm-hmm. and, and and so the cats don't be want to help him. Yeah, and that's why I said I've seen that too, and I'm like, man, lady on video, and I'm like, man, lady, he just trying to help you. Why are you yapping at him? Yeah. And then I think I did see that one time. Dude tried to help a woman. She started yapping at him, and then he whooped the ass, and I was like. <laughs> Messed you up, need man. to just shut up. Yeah. But, but in that instant, I was like, no, nah, there was a dude trying to break it up. Now, like I said, we don't know what happened after they went outside. But And and see, the thing with De- Javante is this, too. Um, I always say that men Got right marginalize mental. women down to tits and ass, and women marginalize men down to ATM. So women have to watch out from dating dirty niggas. Who who see them as sexual objects, and men have to watch out for women who are thoughts, man, mm-hmm. and gold diggers. So what you see is that they say, "Oh, he grabbed her because she's sex set down next to Floyd Mayweather." So Floyd Mayweather is supposed to be this dude uh, manager Mentor. or some shit, and they say the story of Floyd sleeping with his old lady, right? But that is like that's what I said. It is. Sorry, cut you up, but it's a bunch of stuff. Cause they were like, "Yo, they pulled the broke up." And then Fifty had put out there that Javante had pulled been Dane one floor Floyd chick. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, they kind of do this shit to each is, other. Yeah, and so that was another thing. And I was like, "Yo, 
But why you just pulling up your baby mama if y'all ain't together no more? But the thing is, though, like I said, when you dating a thought, bro, you you <coughs> don't think you got no security, man. But he loved her. Because if some dude who got more money than you try to get at her, she gonna go with that dude. More fame. Like I said, some of these chicks out here ain't raised to be wise, man. They've been raised to be survivors. And that's how they see life. They see men as survival. That's why every time a man cheats on a woman, the mistress always knows about the wife. Because she's trying to take that woman's place. Yeah. Chicks are survivalists, B. And so he, with this chick, he grabbed up and because she was sitting next to the floor, they were like, oh, listen here. You, 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 you got yourself in a dilly of a pickle, brother. <laughs> You're in the delivery of a pickle, all right? Because you're going to have this problem every time she around a dude who got some money. They're you, that Bow Wow situation. Yeah, you're going to be in this situation, dude. And the other thing, but them, now I said them niggas, they also, I would say, like you and said, they know they're crazy, too. And some, some girls are wild. You the know. ones I can see in this chick, she was like, that's when you know a man loves you when he grabs you up like this. I was like, do y'all just love this function? Man, like, no, that 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 man, dude, don't supposed to be grabbing no chick like that. Like, what you talking about? Yeah. Man, man. Bitches love the function. <laughs> man, that's all they know is violence. But, yeah, and so. You know when they get with a dude who ain't like that and a real good dude, they think something wrong with him. You supposed to be snatching me by my throat, pulling my hair. I appreciate a good dude because he ain't punching you one time, blacking both of your eyes. Oh, I just thought about a raccoon. And I, I thought about a picture of a raccoon. Did you see the picture of the um white dude with catching hair from the raccoon? What? Yeah. No, I uh, Yeah, it was catching hair from the raccoon. I said, man, look at the bed wrench. Wait, huh? I thought you was talking about a goddamn. No, it was a real raccoon. See, you throwing me off, man. Yeah, it, it, it was a real raccoon. You throwing me off, but no, I didn't. No, I don't want to know where you saw this. I, I, I sw- sw- no, I, like I'm gonna find, get the photo, and I'm gonna save it. And I swear, for God, they're gonna be the first like video pull that I get because the net bet wrench that I find. Come across, I'm going to use that photo on the video, and you know they're going to take it off. But I'm using that photo. It was funny. Why, why, why would you use a photo that you know they're going to take it off? Don't yeah. you do that? <laughs> it was, We're trying to progress, saw, not go like, backwards. Yo, dude, this is the perfect bet rent photo, bro. Oh. This dude was actually getting hit from a raccoon, people. He probably was some type of country bunkin. I said, is that Candace Owens? There's a lot of them. <laughs> but no, I was thinking about the dude, um, French Montana. Yeah, him and 50, man. You know, people said he, uh, he got punched and then he put on makeup and went online and said he didn't get punched. Yeah. I, I, no, I don't know if he really got punched because I think if 50 really, no, nah, maybe he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Have. He probably would try to keep that on the low. Because he. Niggas like Frank Montana, he look like one of them niggas that'll file charges. <laughs> he just do. It put in a video, but I ain't, you know. Yeah, I saw the video when. But the, I, yeah, I, it went conclusive to me. All right, people, hit that like button, subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time, man. Peace. Mm hmm. Woohoo.